You know, I am going to speak about the sensitive topic that I said I, I may or may not speak about because it is very much connected. Please don't walk out. Because it's a topic that is, that is a lot of emotion. I don't know why, most often when people speak about it, even, even the rabbis, on two different sides of the, of the aisle, as it were, there's a lot of emotion, a lot of, uh, a lot of rhetoric. And I think that's, personally, I think it's a, unfortunate because I think we can achieve much more as a Jewish people by working together and understanding a situation. You know, we've spoken about this woman now who made a commitment to cover her hair. What is the purpose in covering one's hair? The purpose in covering one's hair, as I said, is it's, a, it's considered an erwa, it's considered a, a, literally a nakedness when a woman is married that she has to reserve for her husband. So now, a woman goes, gets married, and has to cover her hair. How she covers her hair is also important. Really here, I'm not talking to the Ashkenazim, because, uh, but don't, don't tune out, listen to me anyway, okay? But I'm not speaking to the Ashkenazim who are here tonight. Um, I'm speaking to the Sephardim more. Because Ashkenazi rabbis, current and recent, the ones who passed away, you know, in our lifetime or maybe just a generation before, Alema Shalom, have been, there have been different opinions. Those who condone, those who condemn. Those who support, those who are totally against. Women covering their hair with wigs. I'm not getting into that for the Ashkenazim. Because they have, you have, your own Masora, and I'm not going to weigh in on it. But I think to a man, the ones that don't condemn, and by the way, a lot of very heavy-duty uh, hachamim in the Ashkenazi world have been very much against it, but there have been others on the other side also. But they all agree that the wigs should not be the type that are, unfortunately, you see too often, very attractive, a lot more attractive than the girl's own hair. You go to a wedding, I, I, I spoke in my... Minyan one Shabbat, I said, I don't like going to weddings. I said, because uh, the way the women dress, I said, I, I, I don't want to go to a wedding to have to look at my shoes the whole evening. I'm serious. And you say, yeah, I, mean, I understand that, you know, at some stage you're in the men's section, you don't see them. It's very nice. But there's a lot of times where you do, and the way they dress in many weddings, it bothers me. I, I tell my wife sometimes, I can't go to the chuppah. I can't look under the chuppah. The mother of the bride is dressed in a way with her hair in a way I, 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 can't, I can't explain. I can't go. Am I the only one? I don't think so. But for Sephardim, I believe the situation is different. Because the Masara for Sephardim was clear. That Ahachamim did not accept the wigs. Because the wigs today are not like the wigs of yesteryear. Uh, I believe Maran Eliashib made that comment that, uh, in a shiur that he gave, from what I read. That he says the best wigs at the time of the Gemara are like the worst ones today. And what we have is a situation where women are turning men's heads. Are they doing it deliberately? Some are doing it definitely because they believe it's the right thing to do because they see others. I mean, we get this question sometimes. Well, how come Rabbanit so-and-so wears a wig? Well, sometimes I hear that Rabbi so-and-so doesn't want Rabbanit so-and-so to wear a wig. But she still does it. And he's had to accept it. You're laughing, but it's true. It's unfortunate. But I want to ask you another question. Just because a rabbi or a does it, does it mean that it's the right thing to do? We're not allowed to, to turn away from the Torah of our, our mothers. And, you know, the customs of our forefathers are in our hands. If we don't keep them, who's going to keep them? And I'll say one other thing. I'll say there's a rabbi. Who told you that rabbis and rabbanits don't have a Yisahara? If anyone would tell you that, they're wrong. So why people do it, I can't answer. You'll have to ask them. I will not speak for somebody else. But we have to be aware that you have to be aware. We all have to be aware that our actions could be causing people to stumble. And to say, don't look, is really not practical. <clears throat> if anyone is interested in what both Sephardi and Ashkenazi 
Machamim have said on this topic. I don't think we have leaflets here, do we? But we can certainly get some to you. We have plenty. Just let us know. Let us know before you leave. In any case, what's very interesting in the whole topic now, getting back on track to everything, the clothes, the hair, the everything, in this topic of modesty and how we dress, and especially how women dress, and, and, and the way women dress sometimes is also the fault of how the men dress. They encourage them to dress that way. We have to try and understand what's going on here. There are many people who are very strict about a lot of things, about kashrut. And you know what? They should be. And this is not a criticism. They should be. They should be very strict about kashrut. They should be strict about, was it checked properly for, for, for bugs? Was it uh, the, the hashgaha that you keep? Was it bishul uh, Yisrael according to, to what you hold? You should be strict about that. But there are people who are very strict about this. They're strict about Shabbat. And they should be. Because you know what? There are a lot of what we would call Shomrei Shabbat, Sabbath observant Jews who are transgressing Shabbat every single Shabbat. Why? Because there are so many laws and they haven't studied them properly. And they think they're doing everything fine. I'm not driving a car. I'm not lighting a fire. But they're doing a lot of transgressions. We should be strict about it. Pesach? Whoa! So many home road. I got no problem with that. I won't eat, they say, in someone else's house. You know what? I think that's a good thing. You're in good company. But when it comes to how we dress and what we put on our heads and so on and so forth, the self-same people, and we see it over and over again, go running to the rabbis, not necessarily their own rabbi. They go running to the rabbis who give them heterim and, and kulot who allow things and give them leniencies. Let's not do that. This is a very, very important area. This is a very important area. HaKadosh Baruch Hu will only dwell with us, the Jewish people, if we're holy. This is part of holiness. A very important part of holiness. We must be very, very, very straight and very honest with ourselves. You must do what your conscience tells you, not what something your Yesara is pulling you to do, what the nations of the world are doing, or you want attention outside the home. I got to tell you, that comment I made at the beginning about the woman saying, we do it because we don't get attention in the house, we want attention from outside, was specifically about wigs, or shetels in Yiddish, or whatever you want to call it in Hebrew. But it was specifically about that. Her comment was, and she therefore knew it was wrong. I don't, I'm doing it because my husband's not giving me enough attention. So what? It's okay, therefore, for a man on the street to give you that attention? We're Jews. Thank you.